friends. Welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. I don't know how you got here, but I am thrilled that you are here hanging out with me today. So let's crochet or work on any other project you have, whether it's dishes, laundry, diamond painting, coloring in a, you know, a coloring book or whatever. Just find you something to do and let's visit for a while. You might want to grab a drink. <laughs> I am drinking some caramel coffee. I'm out of my regular um, coffee K-cups. I usually get this Walmart. Um, it's caramel cappuccino cups. And it's it's a great value brand. That's what I normally get. And I am out of them. I don't know how in the world I let myself run out. But I did. So I had to grab um, another coffee. Which is a caramel too. Um, it just tastes a little different, but it's still good. So I am just crocheting and, you know, turn the camera on to crochet and chat. And so here we are. I am so thankful for each and every one of you here. Y'all just don't know the joy you bring me. And I, hopefully we're bringing each other. And, you know, I, I love to see you guys all just coming together in the comments and commenting on each other's comments and you know chatting and helping each other out that just brings so much joy to my heart it really does it makes my heart smile big time and i want to ask this up front so it doesn't get missed but mitzi do i know you do you know me <laughs> I asked in another video, but you might have missed it or not got around to watching that video or something. But, um, sometimes you say things like, as if I know you, and then I know that you know my area. Um, you spoke of the Duck Dynasty Church, and I talked about that, and just different things like that. So, sometimes I think I'm supposed to know you, <laughs> so please tell me. Please tell me. Maybe I know you by a different name. I'm not sure. Anyway, wanted to get that out there so that um, she would hear that if she did click on this video. But I hope you're all having a great day. Um, I'm recording this Monday morning. It is my Sunday crochet, though, is what it's going to be titled for my video purpose purposes but i'm really crocheting this on monday morning and i hope that it uploads in a timely manner because i am having trouble uploading things even though i uh, I'll take my phone and put it in the bathroom window i'll take my phone and put it outside on the table in the yard <laughs> trying to get you know get uploaded sometimes it's just hard but we're having a beautiful day here in Monroe, Louisiana. It's supposed to be a beautiful week, and I'm here for it, all for that. It's going to be up near 80, might even touch the 80s a day or so. But it is a beautiful week, and I hope to go sit outside some and crochet. Um, I can't be out there too long because I'm not supposed to be in the sun much, but I think I think I need a little sun. I think I do. I mean, you know, sometimes you just know what you need, and I think I need a little sun to help me get along. Sun's good for you, in most cases. <laughs> I'm really not supposed to get in the sun with lupus, and sometimes when you're on medications, you know, they'll say, you know, don't get in the sun, but um, I'm just feeling like I need a little bit of sun, not too much. I mean, I wouldn't stay out there for hours, but I don't think 15, 20 minutes would kill me. And I guess if it did, it might be worth it. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm crocheting on my sweetheart blanket. And I hope you have a project that you're working on. If you need more details about this blanket, there are 18 videos before this one. <laughs> if you go to the first one or two, you should be able to get all the deets. And info on this blanket what I'm doing but basically I'm crocheting a greeny stitch blanket and I'm using um, scrappy you know scrap balls there well it's not really scrap balls because I'm rolling them off my 
yarn because I want them different lengths. I don't want it. I don't want to color control it myself. I want to just roll up some yarn and let that color control it so it's random. If I was to crochet it right off of the skein, then I would be color controlling. And um, so just to prevent that, I'm just rolling up some balls and crochet until they run out, tie on another one. So, getting on with the questions, um, someone asked me if I received their mail. I'm sure I did because I have some a happy mail video coming out. So, watch for that. Um, okay, so, um, uh, my finger is, it's the same. It's throbbing like crazy on the inside. And when I'm asleep, I'm waking up and it is just throbbing so bad that... You know, I look at it because surely it's busted or something by now because it's hurting so bad. Even on the morphine, it is just hurting like that. So, yeah. And I'm using it to crochet with, and I don't think that's making it worse because if I stopped using it, blood flow is going to stop. So I'm using it as much as I can to keep blood flowing. But I'm using it, I'm really just touching the side over here. I'm not touching all this over here that's so painful. Now this uh, this all right here is a little painful too. But my yarn, the way I'm crocheting, I'm just using the side of my finger right here. And that's working out okay for me. It's not causing too much more extra pain. I mean at times it might, but I'm really just trying to keep that finger going, okay? Because if I stop, blood flow stops. And I don't want that. I want to keep that blood trying to go. I'm taking the medications to the, all the vasodilators, you know, the Viagra and the blood pressure medicine that's a channel blocker and all that kind of stuff. I'm taking all that to open up those vessels. So I want to work that finger as much as I can to make blood flow. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> But I can see where some people think, well, quit using it, rest it. You know, I, I can see where you would think that. But um, in reality, I need blood to go big time. So anyway, guys, um, let's see. Okay, so we were talking about the home health agency lady was late and all that, you know. I mean, she was nice when she got in my house and we talked and everything. I was just super nice to her. And um, so she didn't have a choice but to be nice to me because I was really nice to her. So we had a good visit when she got in the house. But, yeah, she was really late. Like, I don't think um, she's probably the person, you know, that's not on time for things. And some people are like that. Now, I'm just the opposite. I'm always early. To everything I'm gonna be on time if not 30 20 minutes early and I'll just wait in my vehicle until time or whatever but I'm gonna be early but um anyway so I, I hope that it works out with this agency I'm I'm being very hopeful for that we did start off on the wrong foot with this lady but this isn't the nurse that will be coming to see me this is um someone who um does intakes and stuff like that although she did say she's an rn so she said she might be the one to see me sometimes i think when i get my heparin flush on my portacath in my chest that will have to be an rn i'm pretty sure so she might be the one to do that sometimes you know probably just depends on who gets scheduled what but we're gonna make the best of it and hope for the best and hopefully it's going to help me bring a little relief to Big Daddy. I hope. I mean, I'm just, you know, hoping for all the things, okay? <laughs> yes. Uh, so somebody was asking about my toes. I have not lost any toes, but they do turn dark and painful. And my feet often feel like um, blocks of ice, even with socks and shoes on and a little heater down here by my feet. If that blood's not flowing, it's not flowing. A little heater by your feet's not going to make the blood flow. 
And so sometimes, you know, they, they hurt like they feel like a block of ice. And I'll get up and try to walk. And it's like I have frozen blocks around my feet and I'm just trying to walk. And it's it, it's probably hilarious to watch, but it's very painful in trying to do that. Oh, gosh, it's painful. I know I'm crocheting fast. But, you know, this isn't a tutorial. This is a race. No, it's not a race. It's not a race by no means. It's not a tutorial or anything. It's just getting in some mileage. And I like to get going and get in my mileage while we're chatting. Get this yarn to go around as far as I can. But, yeah, I know that I am crocheting, you know, kind of fast. Especially with somebody that don't even have any fingers. <laughs> okay so anyway and speaking of my toes and my feet and all that so someone mentioned um would i learn to crochet with my feet well no and there's multiple reasons one reason i can't get my feet up <laughs> i can't get my feet up in the air to do anything or even bend over and touch my feet or anything like no my my I'm not flexible, okay? <laughs> Honestly, there there's no um doing anything with my feet. Second, I have a foot phobia. I I just have a foot phobia, okay? I don't I don't like nobody's feet. Maybe baby feet if I know they're clean. But other than that, I have a foot phobia. Like don't touch me with your feet. I don't want to see your feet. I mean, I'm not being ugly about that. I'm just saying, feet are not clean. They're not clean. Even if, like, I don't even walk on the floor with my feet, bare feet. I have shoes on at all time. I have my slides. When I, when I step into my panties, my foot goes into my shoe. Okay? Each leg. When I step into my panties after a shower, my foot goes into my shoe right then, okay? When I'm putting on pants, my foot goes through my pants leg and into my shoe. I do not walk around barefoot. And even that, feet are not clean because feet are, um, um, you know, they have pores in them and we're detoxing stuff through our feet and yeah, okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Some people don't have a choice. And I understand that. And they do what they have to do. And, you know, if it come down to it and I had to do what I had to do. Um, oh, um. Hmm. I totally messed up on this corner. I could see where I got to the corner. I slip stitched over. And I did not make my corner, but I can now. I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. So, anyway, people do what they have to do. You know, people are born with disabilities, and they have to do that kind of stuff. I just, I'm the one with the phobia. Not them. You know what I'm saying? It's me with the problem. I'm the problem. It's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> Okay, so somebody asked about um, a uh, if we have a flower or vegetable garden. We did all that while the kids were growing up. We did gardens, um, compost pile, um, box box gardens, raised bed, raised bed gardens, and we did all that kind of stuff when the kids were growing up. Now, me and Big Daddy, neither one have any business going outside doing stuff like that. He would be laid out there in the yard. I'd probably be laid out there in the yard if I didn't, like, just hurt myself trying to do it and then pay for it really bad later. So, no, we, we don't have anything like that going on. We have, the, we have the property to do that kind of stuff. We just don't have the, oh, what is it? We don't have the health to get out there and do it, you know? We dream about doing things like that. Big Daddy would buy some seeds, and I'm like, okay, we just threw away $2 on those seeds, but whatever. Um, 
Now, he did take some wildflower seeds and some sunflower seeds and just threw them out there in a little area. And they, they did grow. They grew some, but, um, you know, but not really just like planting and tending the stuff. He, he does have a little buckets out here where this past spring he did some tomatoes and some peppers. And I will say he did get a few. Um, the deer was eating them too, though. But it was right up here by the by the house, right right up in front of the front porch area. He has um, about maybe four big pots that were left over from when Elijah lived here and had plants outside. And he did plant some tomato plants and some pepper plants. All for him. I don't I don't eat none of that. I ain't eating none of that. No. Um, but. Anyway, he did um, have some. Okay, so now i got a change in what I'm doing. Because I messed up there, but I can still fix it. I'm just going to go um, double crochet and double crochet and another double crochet. Even though that's a chain and three double crochets, I'm just going to treat it like it's three and then I'm going to chain two and slip stitch into this so that moves where my yarn is um, going up to the next row so I squared that off let me just check my other corners just to make sure but I, I could see that's where I slip stitched over okay so I just fixed it and now, now what will happen is, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to end my yarn right here. I could slip stitch over and start it right here, but I don't want to start my thing right there because I'm so used to it starting in the corner. Um... If it doesn't start in the corner, I'm liable to skip it later and mess up. So that's for my benefit and my habits. I know how I crochet. And if I change it to, if I slip stitched over and went up here and that's where my new row started, I'll mess it up later. So I'm going to, I'm going to just come back right here and start up my next row. That's what I'm going to do. And that's just for my benefit. I mean, you might have another way that you do it, but I know how I crochet. And I know um, mistakes that I generally will make. I'll just be watching something and crocheting and crocheting. And when I get around to the next row... Somehow or another, I just jump up on that row and keep crocheting and don't really, um, don't really close it off to start the next row. I've done that many a times in blankets. So sometimes I'll even put a big stitch marker there just to remind me, hey, you're starting, this starts a new row. <laughs> but yeah, that's just me. Okay, so... I am. So, in doing that, just pretend like that was all the one color and I just got back to the corner. Okay, uh, I don't want to pull that tail up. And I'm going to tie those two tails together and keep on trucking. So, so that starts my new row there. And sometimes I do put a stitch marker there. And I probably should be doing that because um, I have a tendency to not pay attention to what I'm doing. I'll be crushing so fast and watching something or talking and just skip over. Oh, so somebody was asking about... My turquoise coffee maker. It came from Walmart. It was probably about like 15 to 20 bucks. I mean, it wasn't expensive. Um, 
and it, it came from Walmart maybe a year or two ago. Well, when Elijah moved out, because the coffee um, K cup thing we had was his. He had got for Christmas or a birthday. And it was it was a fancy one that we had got him for his birthday because that's what he wanted, and uh, it had the cappuccino maker and all that in it. And it was about a about a hundred and something dollar thing, but that's what he got for Christmas that year. I think we even got it on sale for like eighty dollars, to tell you the truth. But anyway, um, it, and so when he moved out. We needed, we had to go get a coffee machine. <laughs> so we went to Walmart and got that. It's, it's just cheapo, but it was, it's, it served us. We don't do a lot of fancy stuff, you know. We just make coffee or I buy those cappuccino cups. <clears throat> the one he had was all fancy and did iced coffee, coffee or tea or cappuccinos or I don't know. It was a lot to it. He had to explain to me, me how to use it just about every time. Um, somebody was asking about my fingers, name is Florence, and they were asking, um, do I name all my fingers? No. Dottie named this finger Florence, and we are going with it, and we are having faith that Florence is going to get some blood flowing, even though she'd be hurting me. It, it'd be throbbing, y'all. Y'all just don't know. Whew. I took a nap earlier. And I couldn't even sleep for between the reflux <laughs> and the pain in my finger. I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, I don't know which one was keeping me awake the most. Both about the same, I guess. Um, I am having like a severe reflux now. I do take two peel protonics a day for reflux. I have not been having issues, but when I started all these new meds and upped all these meds, I'm having some reflux issues, and so I'm just wondering if some of those meds are causing that. Because last week, I wasn't having all this reflux. This is all started this week. I, I mean, I've had reflux and heartburn in the past. That's why I take the protonics. But it wasn't as bad as what's going on right now. And I do sleep on my left side. Because that's the only side I can sleep on. Um, and if I like, if I even roll to my right side to reach and get something, I immediately start refluxing. So I, I've never been able to lay on my right side. I reflux immediately. But on my right side, I have that pain pump. And on my left side, I have my feeding tube. But on my, my feeding tube is more towards the center it's not really on the side of my body, so I do lay on my left side. I used to be a belly sleeper before I got my pump, I mean my um, feeding tube. So after the feeding tube, I had to learn to sleep on my side, not my belly, because I was a belly sleeper. And I can't sleep on my back either. I reflux or either I start suffocating. So... My left girl side, and I know that they say that's the best thing for you to sleep on your left side, but I don't have a choice, so I do it anyway. I do that, and it is the best thing. Okay, um, somebody was asking about Big Daddy and his brothers. There was four of them. Um, the oldest one has passed away, and then there's they adopted a son. Um. And then there's Jody. And then there's one more who is my age. So there was four of them. So he's kind of in the middle there. He's kind of in the middle. And then my, me, I have an older sister um, who has passed away now. She was married. Oh, I think they want to know about marriages too. Um, his oldest brother, um, did marry a girl that had a child, a four-year-old at the time they got married. And they're both passed away now. Um, his oldest brother and his wife. She passed away from COVID. 
He passed away in 2016. And then the next one, the one that was adopted, he does have four children. Um, and then the youngest one that's my age, he is not married and does not have any children. Okay, and then on my side, there's uh, my sister. She was married. She had two children of her own, two girls, and then her husband had a son that his wife had left, and so she raised him and her two girls. And then there's me. I have two boys. And then my brother who is 13 years younger than me, has two boys, two adorable boys. So. Okay, I don't know why my phone just cut off, but I went back to make sure I didn't lose anything there, but we're good, we're good. Okay, so, um, somebody asked about Blythe dolls. Do Barbie doll clothes fit Blythe dolls? It's really a hit and miss. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, I think the waist and like dresses, shirts, shorts, things like that, where you might come into the issue is the length of pants. But, um, you know, you can just cut pants off and let them fray a little bit. And I know they make stuff far fraying and all, but sometimes that fray look just completes a style. And I have rolled pants up and hot glued them up. So, yeah. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, no. I mean, I won't say a definite. Yes, they can wear them. It kind of depends on the outfit and how it's made. But skirts, skirts, dresses, shirts, shorts should be fine, probably. Most likely. <laughs> Okay, so someone was asking about my first diagnosis. Well, I was thinking back to when, um, after Elijah was born and I started getting so sick and I was going to, um, Shreveport to a rheumatologist over there and, um, I was so sick and just felt so crummy and he was so rude that I'd leave him, I'd go somewhere else I mean, not, not the same day, but I'd get an appointment to go somewhere else to see a different one. And, um, like a lupus diagnosis does not come quick. If somebody says, oh, I'm not feeling good. I, I made a doctor's appointment. And then they go to that doctor's appointment and they come back and say, oh, he said I have lupus. Well, I would be very leery of their doctor because a lupus diagnosis can take years i'm talking seven to ten years to get a diagnosis so and that's what it took me a long long time to get a lupus diagnosis now they can suspect lupus you can be on the spectrum for lupus and they'll call that like connective tissue disease and then they call mine mixed because i have so much going on they call mine mixed connective tissue disease but I think the first diagnosis I had, other than like asthma, I think was Sodrin's, or well, they said fibromyalgia. You know, we went through all that. And then, um, like nothing, nothing helped it. Like when I said I had fibromyalgia and I was taking like meds for that, nothing helped. I was just still, I don't even know if anything helps now. What am I talking about? <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> But, um, so fibromyalgia was probably the first thing. And then they were talking about Sodrin's came back positive and they diagnosed me with that. Um, and then somewhere in there, I was diagnosed with scleroderma, but I rejected it and it came back and bit me in the butt. <laughs> I did not want scleroderma. And then somewhere in there, lupus came up. Sometimes they call, they, you know, put, say lupus. Sometimes they only say scleroderma. I mean, it's what they put on my doctors. Um, when I check out, they'll say it'll have, when I get my paperwork, it'll say at this visit we addressed, 
Um, sometimes it will say lupus. Sometimes it just says scleroderma or crest or um, uh, Raynaud's. You know, it just, it, I guess, whatever we addressed. Sometimes it says stuff on there that I didn't know we addressed. But, um, yeah, and so as as diagnosis has come in, they're like, oh, well, you have this, you have that. Um, you know, I went to a dermatologist, and he said, after many tests and stuff like that, he finally said that I also have um, Addison's disease, and JFK had Addison's disease also. But, um, you know, each time they try to tack something on me, I'm just like, no, no, no more, no more. I can't take anything else. I know when I ended up with a trigeminal neuralgia, that's some painful stuff. And your face, the nerves in your face flaring up, that is some, that is no joke. And I'm just like, I cannot take anything else, nothing. And sometimes whenever, you know, I'm at the doctor's office and I'll ask him about something and he'll say, oh, that's, and he'll start coming up with the name of something. I'll be like, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not adding anything else on me. Because it does get to be a lot. And then when you have to go to the doctor for, you know, all these different things and you have to go to different doctors, it gets to be too much. Sometimes I'm just like, I, I just can't go to the doctor right now. I just, it's too much. It's too much. I mean, I do go and take care of myself and do what I need to do. But when you have an appointment for this, an appointment for that, it gets to be too much. It's, it's overwhelming, to say the least. And then keep it up with all that when your appointments are and stuff like that. Sometimes that does get overwhelming. I have an appointment this Friday with the rheumatol no, with the pain doctor in Shreveport. They'll adjust my pain pump medication. So I do have that appointment coming up this Friday. I need to make a dental appointment. So I was really, really sick. Um, actually, my dental appointment was the same day I had my surgery. So I do need to reschedule that. They've called me about it, and I talked to them about it, and told them I was just having a hard time recovering, and I needed to get better, focus on getting better before I came back in and started something new. <laughs> right? Because I'm not through with all that yet. I'm not. So... Yeah, we still have more fun to go. Anyway. Um, oh, so I guess some of you did see that little shorts video that I put up of Patina watching her TV. Um, Big Bang Theory on her TV. And yes, that is a real working TV in Patina's little house. It's on the shorts videos. Um... She, I laid her, put her in her pajamas and laid her up on that couch like she was relaxing and watching Big Bang and like she's, the remote control is there in her hand, on her lap, like she's changing channels and all. And so it's cute. It's cute. It makes me laugh. It just makes me laugh. And Big Daddy too. He was like, what? You done got her her own TV? I was like, well, she can't watch TV with you flipping channels. <laughs> but then there she is flipping channels, so it's kind of funny. It is. I just have so much fun doing that. I mean, y'all just don't know what joy that brings me. I mean, uh, and I'll talk about that again in a minute, probably. Um, somebody asked, was I afraid of being at home alone? No, I've never been. I'm not a scared person. I've never been scared. Um, Big Daddy worked graveyard shift like 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., a lot of our married life. Well, when he was in the plant, he worked it every three weeks. He'd work, a, you know, a week of days, a week of evenings, and a week of graveyard. Um, I've never been scared. I go outside in the middle of the night. Then I, I uh, not now, but back then, I'd go outside in the middle of the night and rake. There was enough lighting from our um, outside lights that I could rake outside at night. Just go sit out there and drink, um, you know, some coffee or tea or whatever and just relax. Um, just go outside and do whatever. If I couldn't sleep, um, 
yeah, I've never been scared to go outside at night by my, you know, by myself or anything or when he's at work. Um, I, I got guns. I don't know if I got the fingers to shoot them because I hadn't shot a gun in a while, but I am a good shot or was a good shot because I grew up with BB guns and stuff. So I've never been scared. I've always, um, you know, just done whatever I wanted to do. Go to town, come in at 2 a.m. You know, back when Walmart was open all night. I miss that. Because that was my thing. Going to Walmart in the middle of the night in the summertime when it was too hot to go during the day. Um, we went in the middle of the night. Because we homeschooled and we could do that. But I do miss Walmart being open all night. Because there's some nights that I'm like, yeah, I could run to Walmart. Um, and then some morning, one morning I had, I had, okay, we had went to Walmart one night and bought groceries and I bought something. And after I got home, I opened it and looked at it and everything. And I was like, I wish I had got more of these because it was a, um, marked down cheap price and everything. And I was like, I could kick myself for not getting the others. And so Walmart don't open till six now. So, I just stayed up and crocheted that night and did whatever. And at 6, about 5.40, I got in the car. I left Big Daddy a note on the door. Said, go into Walmart. I'll be back by 7. Because he needs to leave by 7. So, I was at Walmart when they opened the doors. I ran in and got what I needed. And came back home. And I was here before se before 7. Came back home, and he's like, what'd you go get? And I showed him. But yeah, I, I do miss being able to go to Walmart at night. <laughs> and I don't know how I got on Walmart. <laughs> <coughs> don't let that cough fool you. I'm not sick. That is just reflux. My throat is just raw from the reflux. And I'm... I was sitting in there drinking Pepto-Bismo out of the bottle like it was, you know, whiskey or something. <laughs> not that not that the Pepto really helps, but just trying to coat my throat with something. And that's what I have in the house. I, I'm out of so much stuff. Like, we are out of everything. We need to go to the grocery store so bad. And so we plan on going Thursday night to the grocery store. And then Friday, um, we'll be, you know, have a doctor's appointment in Shreveport, so we'll be out of town. And then Saturday morning, when we wake up, our son Elijah will be home. He's going to come in during the night. I'll probably be up when he gets home. But I'm excited that he's coming. So Thursday night, I want to go get groceries, um, get everything that we're out of, and get stuff for him to eat Saturday and Sunday while he's here which we are going out to eat Saturday night for Dakota's birthday so that's why Elijah's coming in so we can do Dakota's birthday as a family and I know that's going to get harder to do as years go by but we can do it this year so we're going to do it but it means a lot to me um Somebody was asking about doing a crochet along and, the, and everybody sending in pictures for me to put up in a video. Um, that's a lot of work. That sounds good. And some people do that. And my hat's off to them that they can do it. It's a lot of work to do that. And it's just more than I can. It's more than I can commit to right now. It would just have to be a post in the Facebook group photos because I just, um, I just, it's just too much for me right now. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think I need to explain that anymore. Just, it's too much for me. Holding the phone and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Um. Yeah, about those pictures, I mean, really, I don't know if you know, if everybody knows how time-consuming that is, but you have to go to every email 
download that picture, save it, put it somewhere, you know, and then um, go back and do a video and put all those in the video and say something about the pictures or type something on the picture and all that. It's a lot of work. So people who are doing that, you know, please watch their video because they're putting a lot of effort into that. They really are. So watch their video and let them get some monetization monetized on that and earn a little bit because they are putting in some work I'm, I'm gonna be honest and it's just more work than i'm able to do right now with my health and everything so somebody was saying that and i love the way she wrote her post she says she practiced her violin that is awesome you know i've said before that the musical Jeans skipped me. They got my brother and my sister and my Elijah. They skipped me and Dakota all together. <laughs> we got the crafty side. But anyway, um, she says she practiced her violin and she done some other things. And then she did her uh, Duolingo. And I forgot what language she was learning. Was it Spanish? I, I forgot. I'm sorry. This language escapes me. But anyway, that's awesome. I, I had a lot to, to do Duolingo in high school. So, yeah. And we should be doing that. I don't know your age or anything like that. But, you know, we should be doing stuff like that to keep our brains going. I'm not saying we have to learn another language. But crocheting and knitting and... You know, even diamond painting and coloring and all that kind of stuff. That's good for our brains, too. Keeps our brains thinking and sharp. Um, you know, so. And, but I think the way she wrote it out, it was kind of like, she didn't say she had a schedule. But it was almost as if she had a schedule of this is what she did. And then she did this. And then she did that. Um she didn't say that. I'm just imagining that. But, yeah, we should probably all have a schedule of, okay, well, this is what I do in the mornings. This is what I do midday. <laughs> I don't know. Or chores. I always, I was a, a chore chart person. A schedule. My kids' school workout. Their chore charts, you know. All that kind of stuff. So, and then when Dakota um, was a manager at PetSmart, he was having a trouble with some employees not um, doing their job or leaving before everything was done. So one night he came home from work. He was so mad that, you know, it was like that. So he sat down there and he made chore charts. He didn't call them chore charts. He called them checkoff list. And I was like, huh. I thought to myself, you grew up on those chore charts. <laughs> but he made chore charts for his employees and laminated them and all that kind of stuff. So that um, they would, you know, couldn't leave until all that stuff was checked off and they had done all that. But yeah, sometimes I, I see my kids doing that. They'll do things that I did as they were growing up, you know, and I don't know, it just kind of. Makes my heart smile. Need to add in a new yarn. And I think pink is my new color. So I'm going to wind up some. And I'm just winding this up. On my hand like this. Just to make a little ball of yarn. And like I said, I'm doing this because... I don't want to color control it. I want it to have some randomness to it. And look a little scrappy. So, um. Whew. So, anyway. That's what I'm doing. Winding up some yarn. Um. So, several people. I don't know what I wrote down patina for was a question about her. Okay. Anyway, several people asked about, uh, or was talking about crochet clubs 
and that they some people have some they attend whether they call it crochet club or fiber group or whatever you know um that is awesome i love that i really hope to get back to go into um, the library for that crochet club you know i only went the one time and then i had surgery and didn't get to go um that's big the car the truck broke down and big daddy's takes the car now so i just didn't get to go for all those reasons but i hope those ladies don't think i didn't enjoy it and not coming back because i didn't like them or something because i had a great time i did enjoy it very much and hopefully i will get back to being able to go you know i want to do all the things right Whew. let's see uh okay so somebody was asking the name of the theme song of my um video i don't know it's just a tune that's free on youtube you have to use a free one of their free ones um or you don't get monetized for that video and so that's something free from youtube that they allow if i could choose anything i wanted for my theme song it would most likely be the golden girls theme song thank you for being a friend i would love to have that play in at the beginning of all my videos that would be awesome that would be my song okay um a couple of phones ago <laughs> i had that as the ringtone for my friend angela when she would call that was the theme song I tell you what, when I'm when I'm going through the questions and I just jot down something to like jog my brain to, um, you know, to talk about that topic. Sometimes I don't write enough down, or I think that that word is going to jog my memory enough that I can talk about it. I don't know. I wrote wake, and I'm not sure why. Ugh, I hate that. Maybe I need to try to jot down a few more words with stuff. All right, that ball's big enough. Mm. Ugh. So anyway, um, um, let's see. Okay, so someone asked if I have ever done any public speaking. Well, how did you know? <laughs> Yes, I have done lots and lots of public speaking, given seminars on homeschooling and different things like that. Um, I had a kind of a unique way of homeschooling, and so I used to give some seminars on that. I would travel, me and the boys would travel to different places and in other states and um, I would give homeschool talks. Here at our local homeschool group, we had a forum every year at the beginning of the school year. And so I would do a little spell, a speech in that. We, you know, several people had different parts. And so I would do different parts of that. And we'd have an answer and question panel for people, you know, wanting to learn about homeschooling or interested, you know. So I've done my fair share of public speaking but I did enjoy the um, seminars that I would give and then sometimes we would have um, we would have local um, I'm trying to think of the word like a seminar type thing I guess and people would come and sign up for different classes. And so I'd always teach a class um, about homeschooling um, in that, you know, the early years and stuff. And sometimes I'd give a, a little class or speech on high school years, um, transcripts and graduation and just stuff to go, you know, along about that. So homeschooling was always a passion of mine. I don't think it's for everybody. You have to be called to homeschool. 
you have to have that calling and that desire to make it work because homeschooling can get rough there's every day is not a bowl of cherries there's lots of days i cried <laughs> but yeah um the far the good far outweighs the bad but anyway it's worth it if that's what you know your heart desires but anyway um so yes i've done lots of public speaking seminars teaching classes to you know a whole bunch of strangers that i didn't know 100 people you know teaching them you know different ways to homeschool and stuff like that And here I am running my mouth on YouTube <laughs> about anything and everything. <laughs> uh, uh, my hair. Somebody asked, does Big Daddy fix my hair before he goes to work? No, he doesn't do it. When he gets up in the mornings, okay, keep in mind, he has his own health issues. He hits the snooze button. As many times as he can. Now, that aggravates the far out of me because I'm not a snoozer. I set my clock for what time I need to get up. It goes off. I get up. I do what I need to do. He doesn't. He sets his clock two hours earlier than he needs to get up. And he lays there and hits snooze until he has about 20 minutes to get ready and leave. <laughs> that is no lie. Aggravates me to no end. But sometimes I'll just get on up so I don't have to listen to that clock. Um, or sometimes, like, I'll still be up and I hear his clock going off, so I just wait till he finishes all that off and decides to get up before I get in the bed. But anyway, no, he, he barely has time to get his own pants on to run out the door. He's not doing anything extra. And, I, you know, I don't expect him to. But my hair is just whatever it is, okay? And when I'm in the hospital and I got IVs and stuff like that, he'll brush it and put it in a ponytail. I haven't had it in a ponytail in so long, though. I've just been pulling it up with a big clippy and just clipping it on top of my head. It looks like a bird's nest. And that's what it is. It's not pretty at all. <laughs> Once in a while, I brush it. Now, my hair has gotten so thin. It is so thin. It's unreal how thin it is. Because it used to be so thick and hot and heavy. And used to, when I would get it cut, um, you know, they was like trying to thin it out some for me because it was so thick. Now, it is so thin. It is just pitiful. It's It's hard for me to even believe how thin it is. But, you know... It's there until it's not there. Then we'll do something different. And I know a lot of people say, why don't you cut that mess off? Well, because Big Daddy likes long hair. <laughs> and I like it longer on myself, too. I don't like it short on myself. I see other ladies that have short hair, and I think, oh, that looks their hair looks so good. But it just don't look the same on me, you know. The shape of my face, and I got a fat face. So, anyway, um, somebody was asking about crochet wearables. Okay, so this is the way I do a crochet wearable, for, whether it's for me, um, a per, you know, a different person, or a doll. I try it on that person or doll or myself. I try it on a hundred and fifty times. While I'm crocheting it. And that's how I get it to fit. I just adjust accordingly. But yeah. I'm definitely. Trying it on. Doing you know. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Cut back. So that's, that's the only way I can do it. Hi Mary Beth. I'm glad you stopped by. Uh, let's see. Donate. Somebody was asking about me donating blankets to charities. Um, the way I do that is I just, we have a place downtown Monroe where a lot of homeless people hang out. And so we just drive up 
and give out hats and gloves or whatever, you know, scarves, fingerless gloves and stuff like that that I've made. We just drive up, give it out right then, pass stuff out to people, or go to a nursing home and pass it out to the residents who's sitting outside. And that's the way I donate. I don't have an agency or a charity for crochet projects. Um, most places here do not take crochet. Like the hospital, they do not take crochet projects. Um, I know Terry from Yarn Joy Podcast is able to take preemie hats. She makes the most adorable preemie hats. And she donates them every October to a local hospital for the NICU. I think it's a NICU. I'm not sure. Um, but our hospital will not. I even made hats for family members that were in NICU. Two little um, twin boys. And the, when Dakota took them to deliver them, he was, you know, giving them to this family. It's my cousin's great-grandsons. And... The nurse was like, didn't want to take them because they don't take stuff like that. And he was trying to say well, it's a, it's a gift from a family member to a family member. And so, um, I think finally they took them or I don't, I don't remember what he said. If they went and got the mother of this children, which I don't know her. Um, I can't remember if he said they went and got her or what, but somebody finally did take them. And then um, she was able to take photos of them wearing the hats, and then my cousin shared the photos with me. But, yeah, um, they're real picky about that here and don't take, like, crocheted or items and stuff like that. But I personally like just going down there to the homeless people where they're hanging out. And give out hats or blankets, scarves, whatever. That way, I know it got to their hand. They're immediately able to use it. It's not sitting in an agency waiting on that person to come by. And they may ne never go to that area of town to get, you know, that. And plus, you don't know when you donate stuff if people is really giving it out there. or You don't know what's happening to it. So I personally like just handing it out myself. So that's what we've done in the past. And that's what I will do in the future. Um, and we have a lot of need right here at home. So I'm not going to package up hats and blankets and scarves and mail to somebody else to give in their area. Because there's a plenty of need in my own area. I see people doing that. You know, like they'll make stuff to send to somebody else to give out. And I'm like, but what about the people in your area? I'm sure there's plenty of need right there in your own hometown. So my motto on that is always support your hometown. You know, before you go pay shipping to ship stuff to other places. You know, like hats for the homeless or whatever, you know. I know every town has homeless. Um, and if you ask around, somebody will be able to point you to them. But we have certain areas in town where they hang out a lot. Um, you can usually find a good bit of homeless people there. And there's several different areas like that that I could take. I can take stuff to, you know. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, Kim... Please, girl, I am not getting my cats declawed. I thought I said that in yesterday's video that I would never do it. Um, but she went on telling all the reasons why not to do it and then said, think about, Kayla, think about that. I'm not getting my cats declawed. That's not on my list. Um, but if somebody else does it, that's their business. I can't control what other people do. So, yeah. I don't know, Kim, you might have misunderstood me, dear. But I'm not getting my cats to cloud. Too big of a risk if they were to get outside. They're going to need every claw they got. 
shoot, we can't even get around to clipping their nails, okay? <laughs> it takes, we have to have one of the kids over here to clip their nails, which we plan on doing while Elijah's home this next week. I have a list of things I need him to do. Actually, Dakota came last night and visited with us, and I had a list of things he had to help me do. Um, I needed him to put some apps and do some stuff, get me updated on some stuff on my tablet um, so I can watch some streaming channels on it and stuff because um, things had changed since the last time we done that and I had to get him to update all that and then he helped me with some talking through me on some stuff I needed to do for Instagram and YouTube shorts um, and then let's see and we ate dinner Big Daddy fixed dinner fixed a Dakota, um, some kind of pasta shell stuff with cheese stuffing. I forgot what it's called. And then Big Daddy had shrimp and pasta, and I had mashed potatoes. So we had dinner, three different meals. <laughs> uh, but that's not anything new for us. That's just our life. And then, um, I just, and I had Big um, Dakota to do something on my computer. And one of my screens is out. You know, I have three screens here. This one is the one I, you know, search, use for internet. This one is my, um, the one right in front of me is security screens. And then the one over here is the one I watch YouTube on, watch TV, you know, all the channels or search, anything I'm going to watch, I watch over there. Well, that one, the HDMI port has went out. HDMI 2? I don't know. It's went out. I think the HDMI port went out, so we changed to the... Got a cable and put it on the HDMI 2 or whatever it's called. I don't know. Now that's went out. So that screen's not working, and it's got me all screwed up. I'm telling you, because I sit this away because I watch TV over there. I can't... If I watch TV over here on this screen, I'm twisting my body and my neck... And then I get a crick in my neck, and it's just not comfortable. And even turning my chair that way, it just it, it just doesn't um, flow. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to find a screen, a new computer screen, just a cheap one, um, to put there, so I can watch my streaming stuff and do all my YouTube, take care of my YouTube business and all that kind of stuff on that screen. So, what was I even talking about? <laughs> so, I'm not watching anything right now. And that's hard. It's hard on me. I can't get, like, I feel like I'm so unorganized because I don't have my layout. So somebody was asking, have I watched the Jane Austen movies on Hallmark? I don't think that I have watched any, but I don't have, I don't have Hallmark channel. Um, but I did write that down as a note because I think there is some Hallmark on Philo and Angela has Philo. So... Um, I'll check that out, but I did write it down because if I don't write stuff down, I have a notebook where I just jot notes down all day long of things I need to remember, and then I'll go back and I'll just scan that page, and I use different color ink pens and write different sizes and stars and circles and stuff to help me, you know, spot things and see things so it don't all just blend together. But yeah, I have to write everything down. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. But I keep a notebook. I fill up that notebook and move on to another one. Um, let's see. North. Oh, so somebody said they live in North Mississippi. And they would like to come visit. I just wonder how far it is from you to me. Um, I don't know if you're talking North Mississippi on the 
east side or west side, but I am not far from Mississippi in northeast Louisiana, so I don't know if that's a possibility or not. You'll have to make that decision. But I'm in Monroe, northeast of Louisiana. And, you know, close to close to um, Mississippi, Vicksburg. It doesn't take us long to get to Vicksburg. About an hour and a half, probably. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, somebody was asking about my gallbladder. Yes, I... Had my gallbladder removed, I think in about 2012, something like that. I had gallbladder issues um, many, many years. I had gallbladder issues, and I would just suffer through it, spend, you know, a whole night just throwing up and in pain until it passed. Well, then I had a friend who was a homeschool mom. She had a gallbladder attack. She had picked up some girls from homeschool volleyball. Oh, there's a big old huge rabbit hopping around outside. And that sucker is huge. Um, she had picked up some girls from homeschool volleyball practice. And she was taking them home and dropping them off because they all lived out in the same area. She had to pull over her van and get out and throw up. And she was just really sick. And one of the dads was a doctor. He told her, go on up to the ER. And so she went up there and she got admitted. She had emergency gallbladder surgery. And she never recovered. Like, it was really bad. And she um, was in the hospital for a long while. And then she ended up in a nursing home and passed away. And she... Um, she was young, okay? She was young. Not expected at all. And then after that, when I'd see her husband at homeschool events, he would always hug me and say, you make sure you get your gallbladder checked. Well, he didn't know, but I had told myself, next time I have a gallbladder attack, I am at the doctor. And so that's what I did. The After Ann passed away, the next time I had a gallbladder attack, I went straight to the hospital and ended up having to have surgery to have it removed. And I'm glad that I did that because I, you know, didn't want to end up like Ann. I don't know if she let her issues go on too long like I was doing, but her situation scared me enough that I did what I needed to do. So, no gallbladder. Tracy. Oh, dear Tracy. I know. I know. It sucks getting older, don't it? Sometimes it just sucks. And when you have health issues and you're getting older, it's not fun. It's not. So, Tracy was saying, you know, she can't do the things that she wants to do. She just don't have the energy to do them. And she has some health issues creatively, Tracy. And I know, I know, girl. It, it It's really mind-boggling when your mind thinks you can do all these things and you can't do them. We've talked about that plenty of times here, and a lot of us are in the same boat. I feel like I should be able to do a lot more than I do. But then when I try to do those things, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, I can't do it. Like, it's killing me. <laughs> Oh, and I wrote down the word entertain. I don't know. I didn't write down enough content. That's on me. You know, I can't write that well. Because I'm just writing like this, okay? So I can't write that well. And I just jot down a couple of words or a word. There's a couple of them on here that I have no idea. I wrote down patina. And I don't know what that question was. I wrote down wake. And I don't know what that question was. And I wrote down entertain. So I don't know. 
maybe I'll see those questions again later. Ask again. I don't know. But I think this video has gotten quite long. I did have a couple of stories I was going to tell. But I'm going to save those for a, another video. Um, because this one has gotten so long. But some of the questions on here led to some stories I could tell. So I'm going to get to that. Yes. Alright guys. I'm going to let you all get going. I hope you have a blessed day. And enjoy your day. And do something that makes you happy. Do something fun for yourself. That brings a smile to your face. That nobody else is going to understand. Do all the things. Do all the weird things. Okay? <laughs> Remember, it's a beautiful day to crochet, friends. I love you. I'm glad you're here. And I hope you will join me again for some more crochet and Q&As. Drop me a question in the comments. And we will see about answering those. Bye, friends. I love how that's flowing. I just love the colors and how it looks.